Lanny Watkins knows plenty about what it takes to play in a Ryder Cup. The 1977 PGA Championship winner has been part of nine of them in his storied career, eight as a player and one as a captain. The Wake Forest product has amassed as many Ryder Cup points as any living American. He's tied with Phil Mickelson at 21 and a half, and his 18 total overall match victories are the most by any living player on the U.S. side. And although he's 73, Watkins is showing no signs of slowing down. He still dabbles in the PGA Tour Champions TV commentary and his Lanny Watkins design firm continues to help with new designs. In fact, on Wednesday, he was in Austin, Texas to unveil a massive club rebranding at the former Lost Creek Golf Club. Watkins' group helped with the complete redesign of the property at what will now be referred to as Westlake Country Club. As part of the proceedings, Watkins gave Golf Week some exclusive time to talk Ryder Cup strategy, discuss his loss at the U.S. captain at the 1995 event at Oak Hill, and his recent comments about Mickelson. Lanny Watkins. Well, the selection process is what it is. I mean, half the team is made on qualification points, so that's what you had, and the captains do the best they can to match up guys to go with who they have, and then they have to also look at the golf course they're going to play. That's the big unknown. That golf course apparently is very hilly and hard to walk. You need probably young players who can handle that terrain and stuff. That's why you have a captain's choice. He's going to pick the guys that he thinks they're going to work best. Whether we agree with it or not, Zach's the one who's got to live with it. And if it doesn't work out, he'll be the one that catches the whole bunch of crap. So hopefully it does. The last time the Americans won over there, I was on the damn team. So that's way too long. Well, being on eight teams, I had a lot of highlights and really enjoyed it. Anytime I had a chance to represent the United States, it was special. Two Walker Cups, eight Ryder Cups, four World Cups. I got to do it a lot. I played with a lot of great people. I got to know a lot of the players better than I knew them because we were competing against each other and all of a sudden for a week of our lives, we're great friends. We're having dinner together. I had dinner with people I'd never had dinner with on tour and got to be better friends with them. Our wives were closer friends and have stayed that way. So I would say that's been the biggest part of it. The competition, I loved. I mean, we played against Sevi and Ola Zabal and Faldo and Sandy Lyle and, you know, all the biggies. So I enjoyed every minute of that and played against Langer and playing against him a lot. So I'm not sure there are lowlights. If there's a lowlight, it's probably the disappointment of not winning when I was a captain. And we had a three-point lead with 11 matches to go and didn't get it done. When you put two years of your life into something and the amount of work we put into it and, and didn't work out, that was disappointing. But it's hard to say there, there are lowlights when you're involved with the Ryder Cup. They're all so special. We don't play team, we're individuals. We're trying to beat each other's brains out every week. So all of a sudden, you've got 12 of the best players in the world on your side, and that's exciting stuff. And, you know, you can learn stuff. You can learn shots. You can say, hey, I saw a shot you played. Show me how you do it. You wouldn't do that in the normal frame of a tournament week, but there you have a whole different deal. And they're all unique. Every Ryder Cup seems to have its own personality, you know, depending on the venue. So that's one thing that's always been special. I got to play with Crenshaw, Kite, Watson, Payne Stewart, Larry Nelson, Hale Irwin, right on down the line. I was on a team with Jack Nicklaus and Don January, and it's neat. I played with a lot of them. I ran the gamut. They just didn't win. I mean, we had a couple of guys who made mistakes early in the matches, but I don't want to get into them. They were idiotic mistakes. That cost us half a point here and half a point there, picking up a ball when you shouldn't have, stuff like that. Just really dumb stuff. But overall, we had a three-point lead with 11 matches to go, so we did a lot right. Anytime you've got a three-point lead with 11 matches to go and you got the American team there, you think you're going to get it done. Well, I was supposed to be on the show answering a question about my PGA win, and, and then they throw out that out there. But the truth is, Phil's disappointing. I mean, we all love Phil and watched him play. He was a rookie on my Ryder Cup team and played very well. He went 3-0. and He and Amy were dating. They weren't even married at that point in time. But to do the stuff he's done and, you know, cause the problems he's caused and the friction he's caused and the divisiveness in golf that he's caused, if it wasn't for golf, where would Phil Mickelson be? You know, he'd be gambling in a ditch somewhere. So, you know, it's not good. I think he owes more to the game than what he's done. No question, he would have been a captain, probably a two-time captain. He probably would have been the captain next time at Beth Page Black when it comes over here. Instead, it'll probably be Tiger. Wow. There you go. That's scintillating. 
What do you think about this? You feel the same way about Phil Mickelson and all of the uh, things that he's done over the years lately? I don't know, pretty uh, strong-handed there. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Okay.